A lot of people will come to me with questions about building houses. How can I build something like this? Where do you get inspiration for your creations? By the end of this video, you will be able to build houses like a professional Terraria player. Every house is built before you lay a single block down. Before you even start the game, you should have a detailed spreadsheet of every house you want to build that you can reference as you play. Notes scribbled in pen on a used napkin are also acceptable. Lay the framework of your houses, but don't get too bogged down with the specifics. You can decide those later. Get an idea of the themes, amenities, annual rent increases, zero liability clauses, forced arbitration, and similar details. Personally, I will always try to match the character I create to the aesthetics of the houses I'm building. If you're making a stone castle, try making your character look like a weasel. A more warm, rustic cottage fits well with the weasel-looking character. Floating island creations will match the energy of a weasel, while subterranean labyrinths should be owned by weasels. If you plan to build houses in the underworld, I suggest a ferret. Once you're in the game, it's key to remember that you don't have the best building tools available yet. Your blocks are limited, you don't have paints, and therefore you should build every house out of wood with wooden walls. You can lie to yourself and call these temporary houses, but we both know you aren't going to make permanent ones. If you still want to keep up those delusional thoughts though, these are the three biggest things that you need to master to build like a professional. Variety, asymmetry, and function. Variety is simple. Make things different. Don't copy and paste the same house schematic across the world. Make your houses unique. Use a variety of building materials, blocks, and walls. Get creative with paint colors. Mix things up. You've got 11 different blocks in your inventory. Use them all. You're painting your vision on a blank canvas. Let those thoughts flow freely. I'll walk you through some of the houses I've built and the places that I received inspiration from. This house evokes a very unique feeling, one that many people will remember. The Yo-Yo Man, who would visit children in elementary school assemblies and sell yo-yos. He's back. J. With this one, I channeled the emotional turmoil of an impossible decision. The pizza you usually buy is on sale for $5, but there's one you've never tried before on closeout for $3.47. Do you take the gamble? Is it on closeout because it's bad? It's a frozen pizza. How bad could it be? A thousand thoughts racing through your mind, flowing freely into this house. This took me back to when I watched my freshman year roommate, Charles E. Cheese, beat Chester Cheeto within an inch of his life for sleeping with his girl. He would later go on to serve 20 years for armed robbery, manifesting in the house being located underground. Rain World Hunter Of course, you don't have to draw inspiration from the same places I do. They're your houses, not mine. You might feel a deep connection to a cold bag of mozzarella cheese or that feeling finding a pack of starburst in your Halloween candy that has two orange starbursts. Or that time your mom told you that you were moving across the country but didn't want to tell your friends because she wasn't sure it was happening yet and didn't want to be embarrassed, so you made plans with your best friend to go laser tagging and say goodbye, but then the laser tag place was closed for the holiday and you never saw them again. Asymmetry is one of the easiest fixes for bland housing. Don't stack up all your houses on top of each other with a chair, torch, and table in the exact same spot. Change their locations or how large the rooms are. Make different window sizes, use different walls for different rooms, and try alternating the furniture that you use. Perfectly symmetrical houses might look neat, but they don't look natural. They're sterile and off-putting. If you can turn this into this, you're well on your way to becoming a building master. Function just means making your builds actually work when playing. This is a mistake. There's no protection. The NPCs inside will just die. Sure, it's the house that speedrunners build. Are you speedrunning? No. You'll waste a lot more time waiting for the NPCs to respawn than it would have taken to build a safer house, especially if you need those NPCs alive to use pylons. Your ideal house will hold two to three NPCs and contain a pylon, and you'll ideally have multiple of these houses in the world to create a pylon network. What NPC should you house together? Uh, whoever you feel like. To buy the pylon in the first place, all you need is two NPCs, one of whom has literally anything positive to their happiness outside of isolation. One liked NPC, or just being in a liked biome with a neutral NPC is enough. You do not need an elaborate pylon guide. Nurse plus merchant gets every biome outside of the desert, and they're usually the first two NPCs you get. 
Nurse and arms dealer does everything but the snow biome. Mechanic and goblin gets every pylon. Zoologist and golfer gets every pylon. Once you have that pylon, it doesn't matter who lives there. Move the happy pair in, buy the pylon, move someone else in, then move the happy pair somewhere else to buy another pylon. You should always have the goblin underground with the die trader and mechanic to optimize his prices. If you want to buy a massive amount of wiring material, put him in an underground snow biome to make the mechanic happy as well. Outside of that, I barely ever put much thought into happiness. If you need to buy a lot from a particular NPC or you're doing fishing quests, make sure the relevant NPC is happy, but most of them I won't use much when playing. Don't make them extremely unhappy by cramming them into a tiny area, but don't bend over backwards to optimize the happiness of an NPC you're barely gonna use. That's all the advice I've got for you today. If you keep these tips in mind, you are well on your way to becoming a building master.